Now, every component in the assembly line is two parts. You have the assembly line component itself, which is a general wrapper provided by the server. And this is where your attribute maps, your hooks, and various other customization settings are kept. In addition, every component has an interface, which is what is designed to speak with the protocol or the API or the system that you're working with. And when you build a custom component, all you make is the interface. For a connector interface, you only need to implement those methods to support the modes that your component will support. And here is a list of the interface methods for the most commonly used connector modes. We'll be doing iterator mode in this example. So let's start off here in 611. Then we'll just add an assembly line. And I'm going to call this zero underscore test file scripts. That way it sorts at the top. I'm going to build this as a series of script components. So that way I can debug it here in 611. We'll call this initialize. And I'm going to need a search path that we start the, uh, the file search on. And we'll just look in a directory called solder2 that I have on my machine. Now I can't use a single backslash here because that's an escape character in a JavaScript string. So I can either use two or I can use forward slash. Now I'm going to create a file object. with this search file path passed in. Now I've already brought up the Java docs. And from the list of const or the constructor summary, I can see that I can create a new one just passing in the path name as I was doing. And then I can use the isFile method to determine whether this is a directory or file. And in that way, I could also search recursively if I wanted to. And finally, I've got a list files method, which gives me an array in return now I check to make sure that that file exists. And now we can have our logic. And all we're going to do here is return a list of files by requesting this from our file object. Else, the list will be null. And then finally, we can demonstrate or we can show what we've got by displaying this. And furthermore, we can check each file to see whether or not, or each one of these objects we've gotten back to see whether it's a file or not. And then let's just test this. And I'm going to step through this in the debugger. So we'll just go past initialization. And at this point, I now have a file object, which has been defined. So it's found, it exists, but it's not a file. Let me check that it exists. That's fine. And then we'll just do the display. And here we see the results. OK, now we're ready to move this logic into our connector. Start off by creating a new connector, and then choosing a script connector. And I'll call this my file scan connector. Now, setting the mode here doesn't make a difference. I'm just doing this for completeness sake. TDI then brings up a template that shows me what the interface of a connector looks like. You'll also notice that all the various functions or features of connectors are still provided for my scripted component. So we'll just take my code out of initialize here, copy that, and then paste it here in the initialization part. We're also going to need an index. And when we select the entries, that's the time when we're going to set the index to zero Once this is completed, we can then think about our get next entry.
And here in this example, uh, we've got just a global counter just like we have. But I'm going to check here that file index is greater than the list length, greater than or equal to. I'm also going to define list out here. We also need to check to make sure that list exists. So if list does not exist, or the file index is greater than list length, then we set the status to zero, and that's really all we have to do, and return. Otherwise, we want to return an attribute, and we could return the file object itself. Probably the easiest way of doing this. And then increment the file index. Now let's test to see if this works. We just go to one of our maps, either input or output, press connect, and now we're stepping through that. So now we've built a very simple connector. The disadvantage with sharing this is that the person who's going to implement it has to either go into the, the script itself and change this search area, or we could base this, let's say, for example, on a TDI property. But then we have to define the property, make sure that the property is also there and part of the description for this component. So to bring this now into 7.0, I'm going to just copy this top part. These other methods, or the templates for these other methods, are those that I'll need for modes like add only, or update, or delete. And since I'm only going to be supporting iterator mode, I just need select entries and get next entry. Bring up 7.0. And here, under my test project, under resources, I'm going to create a new connector. Again, I choose the script connector. I'm going to choose iterator mode. And it also gives me a template here under the connection tab. So here are the same template with the addition of query schema. Query schema also needs to be implemented. And this, for us, our case, instead, is going to be, the name is going to be the file, and it's going to be a java.io.file that's returned. And now we can test this by going to our input map. Now, one more thing we can do with 7.0 is to create a custom form for our connector. So this time I'm going to open and edit our connector with the forms editor. I have the sections advanced in general. I'm not going to need the advanced section, so I'll just remove that. Um, there's already a field for editing the uh, script. I, don't want to, I just want to remove that. And instead, we're going to add a field the label is going to be search path. We can give it a tool tip. Now we have to add this to our general section. I'm going to remove this one. Press the add button and there's my search path at the top. Then we can test the form with this button. This is the way it's going to look for a user. We can then now publish this. The package ID is going to be the name of the file on disk. And then when I add connectors, if I go looking for file, I now have a file scan connector. This is the package which is now available, including this new form that I've designed. And I can hand this XML to somebody else, and they can drop it in their packages or their jars area, and TDI automatically makes it available. And that's the end of this presentation. And now it's a connector available for use like any other in TDI.